Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today I prepare one of my new favorites, asparagus chickpea salad. And I visit Home Brewers headquarters, the Pump House in Struthers. But first, a kayak trip on the Mahoning River. Well, I am not really sure whether to kiss or kick Mr. Callinger here. <laughs> he is a friend of the Mahoning River, and he, you know, really got me involved with this kayak uh, canoe Very trip. Good. And you are a kayaker. Yes. And how long have you been involved with this uh, organization? With the organization, better part of a year. And uh, it's been a nice little ride in so many ways. Um, there's a lot to like about for several reasons. So one of the things is uh, that the organi- organization does provides information and it monitors like uh, you know legislative things that might yeah. affect uh, the Mahoning River. And I know we're all excited about the possibility of uh, this becoming an, a state park. I mean, uh, and that might not be. You know, and you see the other communities mm-hmm. how you know the river has transformed their downtown and their area mm-hmm. because it then it just you know, attracts people, it attracts business, where before ours was not in such good shape with the mills and all that and the dumping. So now we really do have an opportunity to build upon the river. It's really nice to see it go that way too. I mean, when you're on the river downtown, because it is surrounded by basically, essentially a tunnel of trees, if you will. Yeah. And it's very hard. Maybe the viewers will notice this in the segment. And the perspective, I think will be really neat, you it, know, it, to see it from the river. View. From the river point, uh, point of view. And it, it's just a very pretty ride. It, it's something we've probably waited decades for, but it, and we're finally being able to do it. What uh, was the first place you kayaked? Where, where did you start? Uh, your little hobby? Oh, uh, for me, uh, Mill Creek Park. There you go. Okay, and the nice thing about Mill Creek Park is that there's some, uh, the, the lake portions, which allows you to get some exercise, but there also are some portions back up inside the creeks where you could really yeah. observe wildlife. And uh, so then that just spurred further use of the kayak. And then uh, in addition to the legislative and the informational things that this organization does, it also helps to spur recreation. Because because of this organization, you're going to be introduced to a lot of places where you can kayak. You know, in western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, there are so many places, lakes, rivers, uh, that you're not really aware of. Not only are there a, a bevy of these places to do, the access to these things has greatly improved as well. This is Don Rex, and he is on the board of the Friends of the Mahoning River. And how long have you been involved? Probably four or five years now. And what made you get involved with this organization? I I was always interested in the river. We used to canoe with my kids uh, from Niles to Girard. So when I saw the organization, and they met at that time at the public library, that's when I started going. So haven't stopped. canoed? (laughs) For many years on the river? Yeah, occasionally, not not regularly, but uh, I used to take family members from Niles to Girard, which is a very easy paddle. It is, and they have the launches and that there, yes. or would you just kind of rough it and jump you in know, and jump out? They they have spots, but they're primitive. <laughs> Are you seeing progress? Oh, you yeah. know, with yeah. the the river and you know the cleaning and getting it oh, together. Definitely, yeah, definitely, but. Uh, as far as launches, we were very instrumental in getting the one in Girard. We're the ones that approached the mayor and council about applying for the grant to get the Girard launch, and we got it. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll tell you, I mean, that really, and that connects everybody. Now, have yep. you taken it all the way into Newcastle? Yes. What? I mean, how long does that ride take? I've taken it on and in the river. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you dumped a couple times? Oh, yes. I've become famous for getting caught in strainers. I don't know if you know what a strainer well, is. Well, no, but I hope you'll tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's simply where a tree has come down and the branches are in the water, but the water flows through the branches. But if you get caught in it, you don't flow through. <laughs> you get you, stuck. Oh, my god! And then gosh. you eventually flood and 
psh, you go in. <laughs> so when you go in, what is the water like? I mean, is it just... Not bad. In fact, the last time I went in, uh, I was towards the rear of the pack going, so I knew there was people ahead of me. So when I went in, I just laid back on my life vest, put my feet out in front of me, and just floated down to them. Patricia Dunbar is one of the founders and the president of the Friends of the Mahoning River. And you started this organization back in 12. Right. And what were the goals of your group when you started this? Well, just to, well, first of all, we wanted to advocate for the river. So we wanted to be the voice of the river in terms of restoring it, in terms of recreation. Because so many people think it's like a sewer. Don't step in it, you're gonna get sick. And that's not the case. It is, um, Ohio EPA did a biological study in 2012, 2013, and found that the water quality has improved. And there's still gunky sediments in there. Yes. But the water quality is really good. The fish are coming back. I mean, it's just wonderful. And I want it, you know, we, just to get that story out and to get the community to value what a wonderful resource that we have in our running in our backyard. And it really is a long river. Oh yeah. I mean, it goes from Columbiana, you know, all the way into Pennsylvania. Right. I mean, it's a, quite a river. Well, not only that, but it's got a U-shape. So it starts in Alliance, is where the headwaters are, goes north into Levittsburg and Warren, then starts coming south, and then, yes, goes into the Pennsylvania. So it, it's very different. And what changes have you seen since you started this group? Um, more, uh, launches, which more is awareness. more awareness as well. Yes, because another thing that our group does is we have an annual river fest. This year was our, our eighth because we, we've had yes. one every year since we've started. Just again, to bring people down to celebrate the river, to make them aware that the river's here. It's a, you know, we're also, we were participating with Lowellville. They're trying to remove that dam. And that's another goal is getting rid of all the low head dams that were put in place during steel making. We needed it yes. back then, but we don't need them now. And now they're just an, um, an obstacle for water quality, for fish, for recreation. So, so your goals are just to keep it accessible and just to keep it uh, you know, for recreation. Recreation and just the fact that, I mean, just to come down here and see the beauty. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I've been giving the people of our valley free advice for over 30 years, and my message has never changed. If you're involved in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident, don't try to handle it yourself. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative, dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the red tape that you may face. Hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court, and remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases. That's good advice. Need a lawyer? Learn more at ElizabethBernardLaw.com. RS Paint is a locally owned paint store and not a paint department. Inspiration comes easy when choosing exciting Benjamin Moore colors and finish. Over 3,400 vibrant and durable colors are yours at RNS Paint. Mayflower Wilm is your full service independent insurance agency. We work with several insurance companies to offer you choices for your insurance needs. We'll find the right product at the right price. Personal, business, farm, life, trust Mayflower Wilm. You focus on what's important, we'll take care of the details. Mayflower Woolham, close by with three locations to serve you. Woolley Brothers has a great choice of quality cheeses. We use our relationship with Old World Houses to specially select the product and then have it custom cut and packaged by our own local artisans. At Woolley Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Join the Island Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available. Given is living. Si hablas predominantemente español, te ayudaremos a aprender inglés. Ven a trabajar para nosotros. Well, today I'm going to make for you a beautiful, easy, and delicious seasonal dish using the bounty of fresh asparagus. Right now, the stores are loaded with them, and look at them, pencil thin, the little skinny ones, that's what I love. And 
A bunch, which is about a pound, has about mm, 30 to 40 spears. And instead of cooking it for this salad, I chop it small so you don't have to steam it to use it. It's so easy and delicious. I had chickpeas, fresh herbs, a little bit of sharp cheese. You are going to love this dish. So let's get going. I'm gonna give you the ingredients for my asparagus chickpea salad. For this recipe, you'll need one pound of thin asparagus spears, one 15 ounce can of chickpeas drained and rinsed, three green onions, chopped fine white and green parts, one half cup of chopped fresh parsley, one quarter cup chopped fresh mint, one quarter pound of a sharp cheese cut into small cubes, caseri, parmesan, romano, juice from one half lemon, one quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and salt and pepper to taste. So I washed and dried the asparagus. And what you should do is take the asparagus and find that natural breaking point in the lower third, and then just snap it off before you start trimming it. Because if you don't do this, you are going to get the woody part, and you don't want the wood, but it naturally breaks. See, right there. Then um, just line up the asparagus spears, and I just cut them into little quarter inch pieces. And this makes it really easy to chew. It doesn't take away that it's raw and the flavor is there. Now look how easy this is. I spent most of my time chopping. So now I have the asparagus cut into nice little pieces. Add the rinsed and drained chickpeas. This is a 15 ounce can, half cup, Parsley chopped fine. My onions. Now you could use a red onion here. Uh, this is a very versatile recipe. And if you want to put basil in, um, if you want to use lovage, I have a ton of mint in my garden right now. So I've been putting mint in everything. And then last but not least, the cheese. Now feta would work too if you like feta, but I thought that this was an interesting cheese. The caseri is that nice firm cheese that they use in the Greek opa in the Saganaki. And I love it. It has a nice bite to it. So these are all our ingredients right now. Now I'm going to make the dressing, okay? So I have the olive oil and then the lemon juice the juice from one half. If you want a little more, feel free. And then I just put in about a teaspoon of, ooh, making quite a mess, of the, um, rinse that off so we don't waste it, of some nice Dijon. Now, I do like to add a little salt right now. So if you want, feel free to do that. Okay, and then you just beat it up. Get it nice and foamy. Make sure you use all your ingredients. And look at that, nice and whippy. And then you pour it all over your salad. Now I think, now this is my opinion, that you should mix this up and make sure it evenly distributes throughout the salad. And I suggest that you let it sit in the fridge and let those flavors meld for a while. This makes a really good side dish. But if you want to make it more of a main course or an entree, I made some uh, whole wheat Israeli couscous and I do it just according to the package. But instead of water, I use a little chicken broth oh, to add to the flavor. It is good. But uh, it also, you know, makes it a bit more of a meal than just a side dish. What do you think? Mm, it's delicious. Yeah. This would be good for the summer. Yeah. I mean, you can take it to a picnic. You exactly. don't have to worry. No mayonnaise. No. Mm, it's really good, really nutritious, and um, 
You can have all kinds of different variations. If you want to add different herbs, if you want to add a different kind of cheese, I mean, you can keep adding to the ingredients or taking away. Salt and pepper to taste. Uh, everyone's different. Add a little more lemon. You know, really, it's a very versatile recipe. And uh, it has Jelaine's approval. It's delicious, Casey. I'm glad you like it, Mommy. And this wine is so good, right in my price range, very reasonable. It is uh, Confidencial. It is a Portuguese rosé. Ken found this, and it is refreshing. I love delicious. the color. Mm. Rosé oh. all day, man. Here's I'll the tell you. <laughs> there you go, Here's Cass. The <laughs> but my asparagus chickpea salad is really easy, and the ingredients and the recipe is online. Just go to my website, CaseyMaloneShow.com. This is going to be showing up a lot this summer. Good job, Casey. Good job. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. My basement was dreadful. Cracked concrete, chipped tiles, it was my dumping ground. Carpet, vinyl, wood, don't last. Now I have Pebble Stone, the best basement floor covering, made with natural stone and the strongest man-made binder. Pebble Stone evened out my floor. Easy to clean, resists moisture, and withstands flooding. You will love your basement. Call locally owned Pebble Stone, the best flooring system. It's not just any stone, it's Pebble Stone. Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. At Ruli Brothers Market, our family is in the store. There's a new standard in assisted living, one that combines comfort, luxury, convenience, and the highest quality expert care. Your loved ones can experience it now in Canfield's premier senior living location. The Inn at Ironwood offers fine dining and amenities such as a concierge, salon, housekeeping, and laundry services, and a truly elegant setting in Canfield. Call us for more information or visit us and take a tour. The Inn at Ironwood, Canfield's premier senior living location. Selling engagement rings never gets old. It's love. It's a huge untaking because they're going to wear that ring probably forever, but if they're not going to wear it forever, they're going to pass it down to somebody. Our rings will hold a lifetime, and we want to make sure it does. We stand by every single thing that we sell. I believe I can find the perfect ring. I really try to get them exactly what she would want. And to just be a little part of that is really, it warms your heart inside. Get real, get Kamara. I am here with Rude the Dude from the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Rain, nor snow, nor coronavirus is going to keep the Magic Tree from serving you. Yeah, Casey, we're staying positive through this whole thing. You know, we, uh, we're offering 41 craft beers to go in our growlers, our crawlers. We still have your local beers to go. We have wine to go. Uh, we're going to be open every day 11 to 8. Uh, we have 20% off for EMTs, first responders, hospital workers, uh, gift card specials. You spend 50, get 10 free, 100, get 25 free. Uh, we're also offering free kids meals with every adult purchase. So we're just basically trying to support everybody who supported us over the past, support the other local restaurants and bars also. That's right. Just go to their Facebook page and you will see what is available each and every day. They've always supported the community and now it's time for the community to support the local restaurants. Just come to the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery for takeout. Is it time to update your color style? 
RNS Paint will assist you with your choice of over 3,400 Benjamin Moore colors. Vibrant, durable, and easy to apply. Be current, be stylish. Shop RNS Paint. Well, this is a visit that is a long overdue. We are with Greg Warmly at the Pump House in downtown Struthers. Greg, I can't believe that this has been here for 22 years. Uh, we've been here for 22 years. It was previously on before that. Well, yes, but... A little bit. You know, much more. everybody is right now, I'm, you know, in the last 10 to 15 years, the craft beer explosion, right? And, uh, but you have been making beer at home for what, 25 years? Somewhere around there, yeah. So really, you are like the grandfather, the, the, the godfather. I feel old now. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, we won't have to say how old we are. But really, you know, of home brewing, which really is, you know, the gateway drug <laughs> to craft brews. Very much so. You know, almost everybody I talk to, you know, that has opened up our local craft breweries, yeah. all began as a home brewer. Absolutely. So yeah. they've all darkened the doorway here, many of them? Quite a few, and some of them still come in when they do batches at home still, or need a little specialty something here and there. They always come see us still. And what is your affection for the home brewing? What, what started you, you know? In uh, when I lived in California, uh, I got more into import beers at that time, because I had a lot of friends that I worked with that were from many different countries and would try different things from them, different beers that they suggested. Got me off of the regular American domestic type beers, mm -hmm. stuff with flavor, character to them. Um, then my neighbor next door, from where we were living in our apartments, was brewing one day and I happened to see his door open, said, hey, what are you doing? Brewing some beer, you wanna help? Absolutely. So I went in, started brewing with them, and then it's been uh, this ever since. <laughs> And it really doesn't take up much space. So what is that, a five no. gallon operation basically, is that it? I got people that do one gallon up to 25 gallons at a time. I think it's the biggest batch that one of my customers makes. But uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't take much. I got people that uh, make batches in their apartment, people that make batches in their garage, their basement, wherever. It doesn't take a lot of room. What? What was your very first that you made? Do you remember the very first beer that you brewed? I do. It was an Irish stout, and it was horrible <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't know anything about what we were doing. And luckily, I was smart enough that, like, obviously, there's a, there was a store in California that sold supplies. Yeah. So it was more to it than just what we were doing. So I went to the library, picked up a book called The Complete Joy of Home Brewing by uh, Charlie Papazian which is one of the godfathers of homebrewing, read it from cover to cover and learned that you can actually make better quality stuff by putting more work into it. The next batch we made, awesome. And I, was it hard to find, you know, the grains, the hops? You know, in, in California, I'm sure those were pretty readily available. There was, but it was pretty limited back then. Um, there wasn't as much available to homebrewers, much more to commercial breweries. Um, over the last 10 years, that has completely changed. We have everything that's available to all the craft brew houses everywhere around. We can get exactly the same product. So this is a typical five gallon batch. That is a typical five gallon batch. And what we have we here? That is an English mild, a dark English mild, which is about a three and a half percent alcohol beer, which would be a session beer. If you were in England somewhere sitting in a pub, and you wanted to sit there all day, that would be one of their pints. I like the sessionable ones. I don't like the ones that make, make you crazy, that you thing, know? Even being low alcohol, it's got a ton of flavor. Um, I take that style of beer to numerous events and try to educate people that never had that type of beer before. Because they think because it's dark, it. it's heavy, and it's high in alcohol. Yeah, and what cool. about this one? That is the leftover, part of the leftover batch that Ira gave us yesterday from their Petrushka. Instead of throwing the leftovers out, he had an extra one he was doing his runoff and uh, he was smart enough to call us and say, hey, would you want to do anything with this instead of dumping it down the drain? I love that community. So See? us being good friends, uh, yes, we went and picked it up and fermenting it away. And this is interesting. Now, you're going to bring this to the um, May 4th event yes. and this is the Pineapple IPA. I made a version of that last year. It was just a Pineapple Pale Ale. Uh -huh. uh, so I beefed it up this year and added a bunch more hops that are more uh, tropical, citrus pineapple-y type flavors to them, and there'll be pineapple juice in it as well. 
from start to finish. Okay, now you brewed this one. This is delicious. Now, look at this. This is made, it's a chocolate, or a coffee stout rather, <laughs> made with moon pie coffee. And it really does have a delicious flavor. Now, how long does something like this take to brew? That batch took about um, probably three to four weeks, start to finish, and then I keg instead of bottling. So if you're bottling, it would take a little bit longer because you got to let it carbonate in the bottles. But we artificially carbonate with CO2, so that speeds that process up. Do you always have a large quantity of your <laughs> brews at your home? I don't have that much at home anymore because I don't have a beer fridge in the basement anymore. It has since died. Um, but <laughs> I do take growlers home from here all the time. So, so you mainly keep them here I now? Keep, yeah, everything ferments here and then I store all the cakes here. It's just easier. All right. just fill a growler, take it home or take it to a party. Good to go. Are you a beer snob? I'm by no means a beer snob. No, I was, like I was telling you guys earlier, I still drink Black Label, hams, Stroh's. I'll drink anything. Uh, so you're not one of them like, oh, I will not drink the swill. I only drink the finest. I you will know, try stick. anytime somebody comes up with something new or some brewery in the area comes up with something. I always try it, but there's there are styles that I prefer more than others. Yeah, what would that be? Are you more IPA? Are you um, more stout? What do you really like? I do get in the mood for an IPA every once in a while, but I'm more of a UK type brown ale, stout, porter, um, English mild. <laughs> The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.